Vande Krishna Foundation presents From time immemorial India has produced great spiritual supermen or yogis who have been torch bearers of truth for generations to come they were just like modern scientists and they raise eternal questions like who am i from where have i come how to get out of the repeated cycle of birth old age disease and death etc one such spiritual scientist is swami prajna aranya ji popularly known as yogi protoplasm how did professor padmanabha rao a botany professor from nello turn into yogi protoplasm let us explore the journey of the spiritual scientist and his great gurus ramana maharishi and yogi rama Swami ji you have got a very strange name yogi protoplasm why do you call yourself yogi protoplasm let me show you some cells under the microscope this protoplasm is a living substance that is present in the bodies of all living things micro as well as macro about 80 years ago i was a small bit of protoplasm in the mother's womb no nose no face nothing simply a formless small bit of living matter a big elephant the body is made up of protoplasm and bacteria also made up of protoplasm so this living world is a dance drama of a single substance and the substance has no form by itself but it takes the form of all living things male female micro and macro through the discovery of protoplasm Scientists are collaborating with Vedantic principle that there is one soul in all whether you are rich or poor black or white male or female so then there is unique unity behind the baffling diversity so practice cosmic love love everybody as your own self so now let us chant om together sitting in a library he comes across the famous book who am i by ramana maharishi what an interesting title who am i rao got totally engrossed in reading the book who am i Ramana Maharshi's picture stirred his soul. Thus began young Rao's search for self-realization. was so eager to take the blessings of Sri Ramana Maharishi he spoke about his wishes to a close friend I wish I could meet the great saint 
Ramana Maharishi. Friend, it's too late. I have news from his ashram. He is about to attain Mahasamadhi. But there is another great yogi, disciple of Ramana Maharishi, Yogi Rama. He lives in our village, in Nellore only. Read this book. Search in Secret India by Paul Brunton. It talks about many great yogis, including Ramana Maharishi and Yogi Rama. Thanks. The book Search in Secret India totally fascinated Rao and he got immersed in its study. He comes across the chapter on when a gang of robbers breaks into Ramana's ashram. Swamiji, what does this mean? Deham naham, koham soham. Deham naham means, I am not this perishable body, which will certainly disease, decay and die. Koham means, who am I? Soham means, I am divine, eternal soul, full of bliss, peace and cosmic love. Memorize these three lines. It is the essence of all Vedanta. Don't move! I will hit him! Please, please, don't hit Swamiji, please. Where have you hidden all the money? Tell me fast. Go, check inside. No money inside. I found only two rupees. Please, Where please. Where have you hidden all the money? Don't Tell me hit Swami. Please, please, please leave him. Please, please leave him. Please, please leave him. Don't hit him. Please, don't hit Swamiji. Please. Let's leave. There is nothing in the sashram. Have some prashat before you go. So great was Ramana Maharishi that even a beating from robbers did not arouse anger or hatred in him. His heart was only bleeding in compassion for the poor robbers as they had gone astray. Rao now comes across the chapter in Search in Secret India where Ramana Maharishi goes through a death experience which leads to his enlightenment. Sixteen-year-old Ramana is sitting alone in a room. He starts shaking and a fear of death takes hold of him. This body is dead. 
it will be carried to the burning ground and then reduced to ashes but with the death of the body am i dead what is it that is dying only this body dies but with the death of this body am i dead is this body i no i am the spirit transcending the body that means i am the deathless soul find the chapter on yogi rama in search in secret india on how the great yogi faced a deadly cobra so calmly and so fearlessly paul brunton author of search in secret india is unlocking the heavy door of his hut when something moves across the floor and stops within a few inches of his feet it's a cobra This was Yogi Rama, one of the most advanced disciples of Ramana Maharshi and Yogi Protoplasm's guru. Weren't you scared of the cobra? <laughs> What have I to be afraid of? I approach the cobra without hatred and with love for all beings in my heart. Rama is so fearless. He even pats cobras. I must meet him. This is how Professor Padmanabha Rao, a young botany professor in VR College in Nello, came in contact with Yogi Rama, who transformed him into Yogi Protoplasm. Once, when Paramhansa Yogananda, the great yogi and author of Autobiography of a Yogi, Met Yogi Rama in 1935. He told his American disciples, "If I had stayed for another half hour with Yogi Rama, I might have given up the idea of going to USA." Such was the great peace radiating from this silent great yogi. Yogi Protoplasm served Yogi Rama for ten years. from 1952 to 1962 In 1962 Yogi Rama fell very ill Swami ji appears to be very ill let us take him to Chennai hospital
योगी जी योगी जी हाउ आर यू वेर आर यू आई एम एवरी वेर आई एम एवरी वेर आई एम एवरी वेर These were the last words of the great yogi. Professor Rao retired from his college in 1995 at the age of 58 years. Soon after he took sanyas by the name of Swami Prajna Aranyaji. Later he became popular by the name of Yogi Protoplasm. Atvamanashu pare nanakam militam guhayam vikshajate satyata yogishanti. Swami Vivekananda Yoga University near Bengaluru honored Yogi ji by making him head of their Ramana Maharishi meditation chair. in 2010 ke tu para antarane paramrita parimuchyanti sarve he tatram vitam parame eshma bhutam yat kundarikam puramadya rastham tatra vedakram gaganam vishokastasminayadam Swami ji you have served a great yogi like yogi rama please guide us also on the special path i have recently designed a one week intensive meditation retreat called atma parisodhana yoga sadhana parisodhana means research in this one week camp we will do research on atma or soul it will be a tough camp though You will have to get up at 3 a.m. every day and sit in three sessions of meditation of 3 hours each. You will be given only milk and fruits to eat. In the evening, I will explain Vedanta with scientific examples. Sitting in 3 hours meditation will strengthen your will power and help you tame your monkey mind. If you succeed in sitting 3 hours in meditation without moving I will give you an asana siddhi certificate too Are you ready to join this intensive retreat Sounds tough Swami ji but we will take a chance So get ready to begin the battle with your own mind You exist and you are aware of your existence This is what they mean by saying in sanskrit sat and chit sat means existence chit means awareness and every living thing exists and is aware of its existence but then starts the confusion it identifies itself with the body who are you i am so and so name comes and a form comes so that is the tragedy what is your name sarila no your real name is Satchitananda Sarla you are pure awareness pure existence suppose sarla becomes the most powerful and richest woman on this planet but it is a perishable product which will disease and die you now identify yourself with this and you say because it is there i am existing because it is there i am living and so on Satchitananda means you are divine eternal soul full of bliss peace and cosmic love so always add your divine name to your earthly name 
So now again, what's your name? Sachidanand Sarla. Smart. You have got it. So for seven days, you are going to learn about it. And also, you require some qualifications. You see, what you call entrance examination. In medical college or engineering college, is it not so? There is an entrance examination here also. And the entrance examination consists of acquiring some qualification. Viveka and Viragya. Viveka means one must have discrimination between the temporary and the eternal. Wise people understand that this world is temporary and full of suffering and strive for liberation by living a simple and selfless life. Viragya means one who is striving for liberation from the repeated cycle of birth, old age, disease and death does not squander one's time in sensual pleasures and is detached from the worldly drama. Most of us are searching for happiness in wine, women and wealth. But Tetriya Upanishad says, a mind which has been purified by selfless worth, when that pure mind sits in deep japa and meditation, the bliss it then experiences is billion times greater than the bliss of a billionaire who has enough of the three W's, wine, women and wealth. Buddha had first-class intelligence. He was a prince, had a beautiful wife and son, and could have spent his whole life partying. But he saw old age, disease and death, questioned suffering, did intense meditation and attained enlightenment. Second class, problems are happening all around us. But only if some problem hits my head, only then I wake up and start questioning life and search for a way out. Third class, you are engulfed in problems, but it only leads you to drugs and depression. Most people have second or third class intelligence. First class intelligence like the Buddha is very rare. The body is a moving commode. It has so much dirt inside. It sweats and produces repulsive odors. Yet, we identify ourselves so much with this perishable cage and pamper the body so much. Most of human life is spent pandering to the needs of the perishable body. Ramana Maharishi says, the one who wants to cross the ocean of samsara, that is, get out of the cycle of repeated birth, old age, disease and death, and still only pampers the perishable body, is like a fool who embraces a crocodile to cross a river. The crocodile will certainly kill the fool. When you look at the skeleton, you will find so many engineering principles incorporated there. These joints, they are there incorporated in various bodies. For example, the door is attached on the hinges. Also, the moving chair. It's got a ball and socket there. Various structural features here require a lot of mechanical engineering knowledge. Who is that engineer who constructed this? God is that engineer, you say. It's your body. If it's your body, then you must know. How has it been constructed? Do you know anything about it? You know nothing about it. Can this inert skeleton do anything by itself? There must be some intelligent power or Chaitanya Shakti operating this skeleton. Affirm the idea that you are not this perishable cage made of flesh and bones which will certainly undergo disease and death. You really are an imperishable soul which is eternal all blissful and all pervading, a formless, nameless being, a Chaitanya Shakti, an intelligent power. By doing the skeleton visualization daily, you will get detachment and you will try and lead a more simple and selfless life.
the heart beats every minute 72 times and pushes the blood into the blood vessels and there again the blood is pushed forward. Like that there will be valve point and there will be regular palpitation. Hundreds of blood vessels are transporting blood to every part of the body. Very great biochemical knowledge of physics, chemistry etc is needed for constructing various organs and makes them function. Who is the designer of this remarkable machine called the human body? Your heart is pumping, your stomach is digesting, your brain is processing etc. Who is performing all these incredible functions? Evidently, there is some highly intelligent, mysterious power combining all sciences together. Supposing your next meeting is with the Prime Minister and you are very excited to meet him, but suddenly your heart fails. Can you meet him? So, there is a higher power running this cosmic movie show. Surrender and become egoless. Cultivate humility and understand that you are not the doer. You are only an instrument of God. Vasudhava Katambakam That the entire universe is one. Just as the one ray of white light refracts into seven different colors when passed through a prism. Brahman is seen as the diverse world when seen from the prism of the body, mind and intellect. You are strongly infringed in feelings of otherness. Most people are not living in a spirit of cooperation but cutthroat competition. Spiritual growth is not measured by the number of scriptures mastered or pilgrimages undertaken. It is measured by the experience of oneness. You experience and live. Wherever there is unity, there is strength, power and linkage of mind and thought is more necessary. Example, once upon a time, a teacher wanted to test her students. She held a feast for them. The happy students sat down on the table. The children said their prayers. They were about to eat when the teacher said, Wait, dear students, here is a small test for you. Please eat, but do not bend your arms. Now you may begin. The students were puzzled. How could they eat without bending their arms? Some of them even got angry. Was the teacher playing a trick? Suddenly, a bright student spoke up. He quickly told all the others. Let us each feed the student in front. In this way, all of us can eat with our arms held straight. The teacher came back. She saw all the students enjoying the feast. Each student was feeding the student seated in front. The teacher was happy. Her students had passed the test. If the students had not helped each other, all of them would have missed the feast. So by helping somebody else, you only help yourself. So that single cell incorporates at the physical level whatever is going to happen. It is a written script and the cinema is going to unfold like that. Every detail is written and the language has got only four letters. In English language, 26 letters are there. But in a dictionary, you can find thousands of words. So also here, four letters, ATGC they call. And the way they are arranged gives a meaningful direction to the body cells. Let us do an experiment. Please bring a microscope. Let us examine a cell under a microscope. What is it made of? Protoplasm. Right. So whether you are rich or poor, black or white, male or female, we are all made of protoplasm. So there is a unique unity 
behind the baffling diversity. Upanishads also say the soul is one in all. So we must practice cosmic love. But alas, due to ignorance, man has become so selfish and so greedy and crime and corruption are on the increase. Ignorance of the real goal of a human birth is the real disease plaguing man. You go to Badrinath, Kedarnath to see God, but God is here sitting in you and it's openly being pointed out in the Bhagavad Gita. Or Arjuna is sitting there, God is sitting in you. Example A dog entered a hall which had mirrors everywhere. The dog started attacking his own image. The dog hit here and there and got injured. Similarly, Ignorant people see different bodies and start fighting at each other. But a man of wisdom only sees one Atma in all and radiates cosmic love. Angulimal decoyed came to kill the Buddha. But the Buddha with his compassion was able to bless him and elevate him for he only saw the dormant divinity in the decoyed. If we ask anybody, what are you doing? I'm doing this job or this business. Why do you want to do it? I want money, money. Money is necessary only if you have money to have happiness. And what is happiness? You have got a beautiful house, you are happy. You have got a car, you are happy. You have a big bank balance and you are happy. This is what is happiness. But are all these people having houses and bank balance really happy? Ask any one of them, he will relate a big story about his unhappiness just for some reason or another, physical level or some other social level. You say, I have got a wife, a beautiful wife and she is very, very accommodating. After some time, you say, oh, my wife is a headache. She brings problems. Same the wife will say about the husband and so on about the children. Children very happy, but afterwards you complain, I am unhappy because of the children. So every happiness that you attribute to is after some time followed by unhappiness. But you want absolute happiness, eternal happiness you want. Everybody is searching for that happiness. But you think that happiness is coming from these situations and so on. This is the wrong thing they are pointing out. They are pointing out this, I am pure, I am is happiness. You are searching for yourself, you don't know that. Example. A thief was traveling with the Swami in a train. The thief saw the Swami counting a lot of cash and putting it in a bag and locking it. When the Swami went to the toilet, the thief started searching for the key of the bag. He searched everywhere on the side of the Swami but could not find the key. Exasperated, when the Swami came back, the thief blurted out the truth. Swamiji, I must confess to you that I am a thief and wanted to steal your money. Please forgive me. But please do tell me where you have hidden the key to the bag. I am dying of frustration. Son, I have hidden the key under your pillow. Now, the thief had searched everywhere but certainly not under his own pillow. Similarly, out of ignorance, man searches for happiness outside him in wine, women and wealth. But real and everlasting bliss is only within, in the bliss of the soul. So learn to tap that soul bliss through daily deep meditation. Now you've got a CD. In the CD, you just see the lines, nothing else. But if you put it in a computer, there are so many stories are coming, figures are coming, words are coming, songs are coming. All these things are recorded on the CD disc. But if you look at it with your physical eyes, you don't see anything. You just simply see lines there. But all the thoughts, stories, figures, etc. are reduced into some form where they are being stored here. Now a photo is taken. All the details here are coming into the photo. 
all the minor details are also coming there simultaneously everything is transported in the photographic film as it were and the mind it seems can operate like that it simply looks if you've got a concentrated mind a powerful pure concentrated mind will just look at something and the whole thing will enter into it it will be recorded there and whenever you want you can recall it it is something like copying and it is very useful for students if they can do it that way whenever they sit in the exam in the hall they can recall any page the entire thing will be there in their mental vision example swami vivekananda once went to a library and asked for a book give me a book on world religions here after one hour swami ji returned the book i have finished the book you can have it back how is that possible how can you finish such a thick book in such a short time okay you can ask me any question from the book to the librarian's amazement swami ji answered all the questions the librarian was shocked he asked swami ji his secret swami ji said he did not need to read sentences or paragraphs he reads the whole pages at a glance this is what is called photographic memory we also can improve our concentration powers with regular meditation that is why swami vivekananda once said if i have to start my education again i will not start reading many books i will focus on improving my concentration if you have a concentrated mind you can read many books in no time om iti ek aksharam brahma it is ek aksharam one letter and it signifies the brahman and so what shall we do sir we have haran pronounce it in the way that it is prescribed ma manusmaran think of me and what does this mean the lord krishna is saying it and lord krishna himself says aham atma guna kesa sarva bhuta sayastitha aham atma swarupa i am residing in everybody's heart so you must remember or contemplate on this atma but we don't know what atma is at present so until you know you concentrate on the sound om is a sound you just concentrate on the sound om has three letters a u m A symbolizes your waking state. U symbolizes your dreaming state. M symbolizes your deep sleep state. Om taken as a single unit stands for Turiya, which is the fourth state. Mandukya Upanishad reveals the secret meaning of Om, which is the name of Brahman. It gives an analysis of the three states of waking, dreaming, and deep sleep. and how to reach the fourth state turiya whose nature is sat chit ananda which means absolute existence consciousness and bliss and that is what the fourth state is they give it a name samadhi samadhi is is a term used for highly concentrated introverted state the mind is completely withdrawn deep within you go and at some stage you realize that particular state whereby you don't have a name and you don't have a form or so but you stay there as peacefully and happily pain cannot touch the one who gets established in turiya state through deep meditation for example ramana maharishi had cancer but was not dependent on doctors and medicines and remained immersed in the bliss of samadhi till his last breath there was a divine peace and joy radiating from his face even though his body was tormented by pain once he was meditating in a cave and insects had eaten away his thigh yet he was unaware of the body and totally immersed in the bliss of samadhi meditation on om with devotion and meaning leads to realization of brahma gyan or self knowledge chant om with a spirit of inquiry and devotion for you are evoking the blessings of the lord of the universe every time you chant ask yourself 
Who am I? Am I this perishable body which will certainly disease, decay and die? Or am I a divine child of God made in His image of eternity, immortality and everlasting bliss? Who am I? There was one millionaire who lived in a very big house, but he was a big miser and cheated many, many people. He buried some of his gold in one corner of the house. He did not even tell his son where he had hidden his gold. One day the miser suddenly died. The son searched everywhere for the gold but could not find it. After some time, an ugly leper boy was born in a poor slum. The leper boy started begging. One day the boy by chance came in front of the same palatial house in which he was a rich person in his previous life. By God's grace, he recollected his past life and went inside the big house and started telling his son that the house belonged to him. Beat this boy! Throw him out! Buddha Bhagwan happened to be passing by and intervened. Stop. Do you remember where you have hidden gold in your past life? Yes. I will show you. Here. It's under the bed. So it was proof that the slum boy was indeed a millionaire in his past life. But why was he so poor and wretched in his next birth? Because he had been very selfish cruel and mean. He had been demoted in his next birth. No one can escape the law of karma. As you sow, so shall you reap. If everyone understood that by harming somebody else, he is only harming himself because one soul pervades the entire universe, no one would harm another and all crime and corruption would stop on this planet. But because people are ignorant of the law of karma, the reincarnation theory and self-knowledge, crime and corruption flourish on this planet. Most people are religious but not spiritual. They quarrel over religion, but there are infinite ways to be infinite. They do a lot of pujas or pray to fulfill some worldly desire for a son, money, etc. That is called commercial devotion, trying to do business with God. Spirituality, on the other hand, implies living a simple and selfless life and seeing and serving the one Lord in all, whether rich or poor, male or female, white or black, healthy or sick. What is the root cause of worry? It is your short-sighted vision. Expand your vision about yourself, about life and this universe. This universe has been there for at least 19 billion years and it's a part of a billion galaxies. And in that is our planet Earth. And in that there is you then why do you give yourself so much importance? In this universe, your planet is insignificant and you are even more insignificant. You may think you are a hero, but you are not even a zero. In millions of years, billions of people have walked on Earth. There are 7 billion people on this planet today and many are being born every day and many are dying. When you see your life from this bigger context, your worries fade into insignificance. Why are you so obsessed with I, me and mine? Attachment to the perishable body is a root cause of all misery. My money, my family, my property, but even this body is not yours. It will certainly be burned to ashes one day. 
hardly 80 years you were on earth. Out of that, half your life was spent on eating and sleeping. What is 80 years in terms of eternity? When you expand your vision, all your worries will disappear. In 2001, Yogi Protoplasm was in Rishikesh in Swami Dayananda's ashram. Vandana, a young seeker, was also staying in that ashram. At that time, she was going through some trauma and started narrating her problems to Yogiji. Swamiji, I'm very troubled. I have to take many medicines every day. Doctors say I suffer from depression. Buddha Bhagwan started his life, his spiritual life. What was the problem? He wanted to eradicate Dukkha. What is the cause of Dukkha? Everybody is suffering. Human beings are suffering. Why are they suffering? Because they have desires and the desires are not being fulfilled at some stage or the other. Analyze the life of anybody, however rich, however great he may be, you'll find there is sorrow sometime or the other in his lifetime. Nobody can avoid them however rich they might be. You have no illness. I can see through you. These doctors just want to make money. Please read Deepak Chopra's book, Quantum Healing. It will tell you about the side effects of antidepressants. Om is the ultimate healer. Sit down now and chant Om with me. Um... Hypnotically, she sat with Yogi Protoplasm for hours, oh. chanting Om. And 15 years of Vandana's trauma mystically vanished. Her mind, which had been in pieces, became so peaceful. And a grateful Vandana then started Vande Krishna Foundation in 2013 to promote her guru's teachings on science and Vedanta worldwide. Yogi Protoplasm's teachings on science and Vedanta is very relevant in today's age as we live in a scientific age. It's also a very secular approach as it has the potential to expose the unique unity behind the baffling diversity of world religions. Whether you are a Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, Christian, Jew, etc. We all have the same skeleton same circulatory system. We are all made of the same protoplasm and live in the same galaxy. So why quarrel over religion? There are infinite ways to the infinite. Thank you. 